Hello, it gives me a lot of pleasure to meet you in this new English lesson on Onorwa TV. I wish you good time, full of joy and benefit. Dear students, speech is made of words. These words could be adjectives, adverbs, pronouns, verbs, and others. In our lesson today, we are going to talk about a part of speech which is nouns. We are going to discuss its two types. If you are ready to the lesson, please, let's begin. Look here. First of all, we are going to begin with a memory game. You are going to watch a movie. Look, watch this movie and try to remember items as much as you can. Once again, watch this movie and try to remember items as much as you can. Let's, dear students, watch the movie together. students I want you to remember some people let's remember together a doctor and a mother what was in the movie students what else let's remember together Asaf what else children very good you are okay we saw some animals what did you see let's remember together pears and an octopus very good you are. Let's go on. Also, we saw some places. What did you see? A sea and Egypt. What else? A mosque. Very good you are. What else? A kitchen. Excellent. Let's go on. What things did you see? Let's remember together. A telephone and a sofa. What else? Some books and Peace, also, what else? An idea. Thank you very much. Now, dear students, nouns could be people, things, places, and animals. Once again, nouns could be people, things, places, and animals. Now, dear students, from all these pictures, we can conclude that a noun is a word that refers to a person, a place, an animal, or a thing. Once again, a noun is a word that refers to a person, a place, an animal, or a thing. Now, dear students, look at this picture. Here we have some cakes. Look, one cake, two cakes, three, four, five, etc. Here we have cakes, and we can count the cakes. We can say one cake, two cakes, three cakes, and etc. Let's go on. Look, dear students, here we have some pens. Let's count them. One pen, two pens, three, four, five, and six. Here we have a chair, one chair, while here we have four oranges and four carrots. 
So, dear students, these nouns are countable nouns. Countable nouns, because we can count them. Let's go on. Look at this picture. Here we have some rice. Rice. Look at the rice. Can we count the rice? No, we cannot say one rice or two rices. This is wrong. So, we cannot count the rice. Look, dear students. Here we have some flour, cheese, grass, and coffee. Can we count the flour? What about the cheese? Can we count here the grass and the coffee? Of course, we cannot count them. So, these nouns are uncountable nouns. Uncountable nouns. Now, dear students, we can conclude that nouns can be classified into two types, which are countable and uncountable. Once again, nouns can be classified into countable and uncountable. Dear students, notice with me, here we have some bananas. Let's count them. Here we have one banana, two bananas, and three bananas. So here we have three bananas, three bananas. Now, dear students, we can conclude that countable nouns are nouns that can be counted. Once again, countable nouns are nouns that can be counted. We can say one banana, two bananas, and three bananas. Let's go on. Look, dear students, here we have an egg, an egg, one egg. Here we have one egg. We use an because egg is a word starts with a vowel letter. So we say an egg, an egg. Look here, look here. Here we have three eggs. Look, one, two, three eggs. Eggs, here we have eggs. We can use the singular form and the plural form. An egg, eggs. So dear students, we can conclude that countable nouns have both singular and plural forms. Once again, countable nouns have both singular and plural forms. Thank you very much. Look, dear students, look at those beautiful cats. Here we have one, two, three cats. So, I have got three cats, three cats. So, dear students, we conclude that we can use numbers before countable nouns. We can use numbers before countable nouns. Look, three cats, three. We can say four, five, whatever. Very good you are. Look, dear students, here we have some tea. T. Can we count the T? Of course not. So T is an uncountable noun. We cannot count the T. Look, dear students, there is some T in the cup. There is some T in the cup. So we can conclude that most uncountable nouns can be only used in singular forms. Once again, most uncountable nouns can be used only in singular forms. Let's go on. Look, dear students, here we have some sugar. Can we count the sugar? Of course not, because sugar is an uncountable noun. Look, dear students, I need some sugar to make a cake. I need some sugar to make a cake. So, we conclude that uncountable nouns are nouns that cannot be counted. Uncountable nouns are nouns that cannot be counted. But, dear students, what can we do in order to count the uncountable nouns? Because we cannot count the uncountable nouns, we use certain words to express the quantities. Look with me. We cannot count the tea, but we can count the cups of tea. So we say two cups of tea, two cups of tea. Look here. We cannot count the bread, but we can count the slices. We say a slice of a bread, a slice of a bread. And another one, here we have salt. We cannot count the salt, but we can count the kilograms of salt. So we say a kilogram of salt, a kilogram of salt. The last one here is milk. We cannot count the milk, but we can count the bottles of milk. So, three bottles of milk. Once again, two cups of tea, a slice of a bread, a kilogram of salt, and three bottles of milk. Now, dear students, we are going to have a reading activity. Let's read this text together. Read the conversation between Ali and mom. Read the conversation between Ali and mom. Let's read the conversation together. Could you go to the grocery store and do some shopping for me, Sammy? Sure, Mom. What do you need? I will write down a shopping list. I want to make some kebabs, but we don't have any ground meat. How much should we get? Mm, a kilo of ground meat would be enough. There aren't any tomatoes. How many kilos should we get? I need two kilos. And do you have any tomato paste? No, we don't have any tomato paste. Please, get a little of it. One can is enough. 
What about olives, mom? Are there any olives? There are some, but not many. You can buy a jar of olives. And there isn't much olive oil. We need some. Okay, mom. I'll buy a large bottle. Anything else? No, I don't think so. That's enough for today. Okay, I'm going right now. Now, dear students, let's read the text once again. Could you go to the grocery store and do some shopping for me, Sammy? Sure, Mom. What do you need? I would write down a shopping list. I want to make some kebabs, but we don't have any ground meat. How much should we get? Mm, a kilo of ground meat would be enough. There aren't any tomatoes. How many kilos should we get? I need two kilos. And do you have any tomato paste? No, we don't have any tomato paste. Please, get a little of it. One can is enough. What about olives, Mom? Are there any olives? There are some, but not many. You can buy a jar of olives. And there isn't much olive oil. We need some. Okay, Mom. I'll buy a large bottle. Anything else? No, I don't think so. That's enough for today. Okay, I'm going right now. After we have read the text twice, let's go through some questions. First of all, dear students, we are going to remember together the shopping list. Mom needs ground meat, tomatoes, tomato paste, olives, and olive oil. Once again, mom needs ground meat, tomatoes, tomato paste, olives, and olive oil. Let's have our first question. Look, dear students, how much ground meat do they need? How much ground meat do they need? Let's go back to the conversation to remember. Mom says a kilo of ground meat will be enough. A kilo of ground meat will be enough. So, dear students, can you answer the question, which is how much ground meat do they need? Thank you. The answer is, they need a kilogram of ground meat. Once again, how much ground meat do they need? They need a kilogram of ground meat. Let's have our second question. Are there any tomatoes? Are there any tomatoes? Let's go back to the conversation to remember. Mom says, no, there aren't any tomatoes. No, there aren't any tomatoes. So, what is your answer? The question is, are there any tomatoes? Thank you. The answer is, no, there aren't any tomatoes. Once again, are there any tomatoes? No, there aren't any tomatoes. Let's have another question together. How much tomato paste do they need? How much tomato paste do they need? Let's remember the conversation. Mom says, get a little of it. One can is enough. Once again, get a little of it. One can is enough. So what is your answer for this question? Which is, how much tomato paste do they need? The answer is, they need a little one can. Once again, how much tomato paste do they need? They need a little one can. Let's go on. Are there any olives? Are there any olives? Let's remember what mom has said. Look, she has said, there are some. There are some. So what is your answer for this question, which is, are there any olives? Exactly. The answer is, yes, there are some. Once again, are there any olives? Yes, there are some. Let's go on. Look, dear students, how much olive oil do they need? How much olive oil do they need? What did mom say in the conversation? Let's go back to remember. She said, get a large bottle. Get a large bottle. So what about your answer? The question again, how much olive oil do they need? Brilliant. The answer is, they need a large bottle. Once again, how much olive oil do they need? They need a large bottle. Now, dear students, I'm going to leave you for a short break. Stay with us. I will be back. Welcome back. Now, dear students, Let's remember together what we have discussed before the break. Some goes with both countable and uncountable nouns in affirmative sentences. 
and he goes with both countable and uncountable nouns in negative sentences and in questions. To ask about the countable nouns, we use how many, while to ask about the uncountable nouns, we use how much. Let's go on. Look, dear students. Many and a few go with countable nouns, while much and a little go with uncountable nouns. Countable nouns can be singular and plural, while the uncountable noun is only singular. Thank you very much. Now, dear students, it's time to practice. Let's practice. Let's have our first activity, which is choose the correct answer. Choose the correct answer. Look, dear students, we need a little or a few information about UNRWA. Thank you. A little is used with the uncountable nouns, while a few is used with the countable nouns. So which one would you choose here? Exactly. So we need a little information about UNRWA because information is an uncountable noun. Let's go on. It's raining. Suha needs an umbrella. An or a. Thank you. The answer is it's raining. Suha needs an umbrella. Once again, it's raining. Suha needs an umbrella. Let's go on. Some or any. The boys bought some or any poles. Look at the sentence. Remember, some is used in affirmative sentences while any is used in negative sentences and any questions. Which one would you choose? Exactly. The answer is the boys bought some balls. The boys bought some balls. Let's go on. Here we have rice. Rice is an uncountable noun. Let's read the sentence. Rami has put many or much rice in his plate. Which one would you choose? Which one suits the rice, which is an uncountable noun? Exactly. The answer is Rami has put much rice in his plate. Once again, Rami has put much rice in his plate. Let's have the last one in this activity. Would you like some or any olives for breakfast? Notice this is a question. Thank you. The answer is would you like any olives for breakfast? Would you like any olives for breakfast? Because this is a question. Now, dear students, let's have another activity, which is do as shown. Do as shown. Let's have our first one. Do you want any books? Do you want any books? I want you to answer this question using some. Yes. What is your answer? Exactly. The answer is, yes, I want some books. Yes, I want some books. Let's go on. Look, dear students. Sammy bought some shirts. Negate the sentence using any. Sammy bought some shirts. Negate. Thank you. The answer is, Sammy didn't buy any shirts. Sammy didn't buy any shirts. Let's go on. Look, dear students. Hadi has got two sisters. Hadi has got two sisters. I want you to ask a question. Begin with how. Very good you are. The answer is, how many sisters has Hadi got? Once again, how many sisters has Hadi got? Now, dear students, let's have another activity, which is correct the mistakes. Correct the mistakes. Let's have our first one. I like many salt in my food. Here, many is wrong because salt is an uncountable noun. So can you correct the sentence? Thank you. I like much salt in my food. Let's go on. Look, dear students, there is some sugars in the jar. This is wrong. There is some sugar in the jar. Once again, there is some sugar in the jar. Let's go on. I saw a little ducks in the lake. This is wrong. Correct the mistake. Thank you. The answer is, I saw a few ducks in the lake. I saw a few ducks in the lake. Let's go on. There are some rice in the bag. Where is the mistake? The mistake here is R. R. Can you correct the mistake? Thank you. The answer is, there is some rice in the bag. There is some rice in the bag. Let's go on. Look, dear students, how much children are there? We cannot use how much to ask about children because children is a countable noun. So what is your answer? Correct the mistake. Exactly. The answer is, how many children are there? How many children are there? Thank you very much. Now, dear students, we have come to the end of our lesson and I'm going to give you a homework assignment. Look, dear students, this is your homework. Please focus on it. Go to your kitchen. See what things you need and make a shopping list. Once again, go to your kitchen. See what things you need and make a shopping list. Now, dear students, we have come to the end of our lesson. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.